to this edition of What a Horse. One thing I do want to do is I want to send our condolences to Dale Watts and his family for the loss of his mother, Lucille Watts. She passed away this month. So we're sorry to hear that, Dale. But you better go ahead and do your job. We'll be right back after these messages. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse, but I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida, and now for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411, and see if I can save you money on your communications. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. Welcome back. I do want to ask everybody to pray for Joel Nipper. They have brought hospice in with him, so he is a... Uh, Joel's a good guy, really hey. guy. He's hard to beat, buddy. Yeah, he hard is. to beat. You know, Jerry, we we lost a, a nut to me an icon, Bobby McDaniel's. The he, he's got shoes. It's gonna be a hard fill over there. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he put he's put on that Cornerstone Horse Show for I don't know how many years, and always just a such a pleasant person yes. to talk to, and uh, he he just he, he did a great job and. He will be missed. That that is most assuredly so. Our prayers go out for his family. Sugar Creek, you heard about it? This is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Sugar Creek's having an online sale. There is no charge to enter your horse. They want good pictures or a good video. Now, if you're going to do a video, you need to contact uh, David about how to send it. The Auction begins, online auction begins the 20th, January the 20th. The deadline to enter is January the 17th. So remember that's January the 17th is the deadline to enter. If you sell your horse, it reaches the reserve price, you pay 10%. That's all you pay, they'll get with you. But I think that's pretty good that you can enter the enter your horse, go through the auction, and uh, you don't want to sell it. You don't have to, but it, it's uh, to me that's a good thing. He's that going is to a take very neat deal. That's well, he's going to take brood mares, yearlings, fall winglings, even breeding stallions. Okay. If you got a stud you want to auction off, he'll take it. Yes, and he's, he's doing it for free. 
Unless you sell it. Unless you sell it. That's, so, that's understandable. Hey, to me, that's, that's a no-brainer. That's right. Everybody you, needs to, I don't know how many Paul Winglands we have out here, but I assume we have You know, they've got a big variety of different people comes out there at that I place know. and look at them different horses. So you never know, you know, help you get one sold. So, I mean, well, that's a good, good thing. To me, it's a good idea. Oh, yeah, it's I mean, a real good idea. It just, it, if nothing else, just to create interest <clears throat> because we got a lot of people having barn parties, chili dinners, and everything under the sun, but to uh, have an auction online, which is, is good because your inspection is going to come when, when you sell it. It yes. <laughs> ain't going to mm -hmm. come before you go in, and, and plus there doesn't need to be an auction. Yes. I've, I've often said, and I've even talked to you about this, I'd like to see an auction to where versatility auction. In other words, you bring your horse out, and you have all the different teeter totter, the stands, side passing, water, the trash cans, balloons, everything, shooting off of them, stuff like, and auction those horses off as they go through the routine. Oh yeah, I think that that would. Uh, well, I help you sell that horse a lot more, and I let show people what this horse can do and all his abilities that he can do. I mean, that's, that's it. So I mean, it, 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 it makes people feel more safe about buying one instead of this word of mouth and say that he can do it. If they can see it, then I mean, they'll, they'll buy it. And you know, that's a, I go to those versatilities when they have them up Circle C. Yes. Now they've had some good ones up there, but they had a real good one over in front of the, uh, the office at Celebration Grounds. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Inman had to put on over there. And uh, I mean, they did everything under the sun. And, and there was a lot of people come and watch it, I believe that there'd be more and more people come and watch them yeah. if you had different events going on around here. Instead of, every time we turn around, you know, there's horse shows, which we need more of them. Yes. But there's other events that our walking horse can do that I think if you did it and, and continuously did it, that it would draw. Draw more people, lot. different people more would come people in. To come in and watch it. Yeah, to uh, watch and to participate in it. Well, we used to do the races. Yes. You know, sometimes, man, the stands were packed up people, there with yeah. people watching the races. And then we kind of let it dwindle down, yeah. which uh, anything like that, you just got to keep going, keep going, keep going. But uh, I, I just think it'd be a good idea to have an auction like this. And Dave is just, I mean, he, he's having one that, if nothing else, it'll create some excitement. Yes, it and will. And that's, that's what I'm looking for. I tell you what, let's go ahead and look. We've got uh, another one of our studs. Now, this, this stallion didn't breed a lot, but I will say this. When he was breeding, he bred some mighty good horses. Yes. And that's Jen's uh, Black Maverick. He got some real good coats out there. He, he had a lot of real good coats. He was uh, it's kind of a shame that we, the good breeding stallions, the ones that produce real well, we, we seem to lose some of them pretty yes. quick. Uh, Black Jen's breeding career didn't last but a few years, and, uh, and then he I'm not sure what happened, but uh, he uh, he put some fantastic poles on the ground. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt about it. One of the best. I guess he's coming for you now. Yeah. Because Byam is. Yeah. There's a lot of good ones that's, out there. That's Byam. a real good one. <laughs> Bob Adcock got a couple that's, of them. That's what I'm saying. That one of Bob Adcock's. I mean, he's. <laughs> that's, he, one, that's a good he, horse. He didn't waste no time. He says, I like him Mavericks. Bring them on. Yeah. Let's see what else we got. Oh, now we're going to go, and we, we, this is a walking horse that went on, won a lot in the walking horse industry, but then went and did the racking horse too. And Roy Wester just tickled death with this one. He is, and I'm talking about Cadillac Jazz. Sired by Jazz Man out of a pusher mare, born April 27, 2005, a Cadillac by Jazz would prove to be a credit to his name winning 18 first place blues and a world championship in the Tennessee walking horse division before showing his true calling as a racking horse when he was purchased by Joan Wester as a present for her husband Roy in 2015. 
a Cadillac Bajaz would go on to win 26 first place blues. He is a four-time amateur world grand champion, five-time world champion, two-time amateur owned and trained world champion, two-time reserve world grand champion behind High Sword, the Western's four-time world grand champion racking horse. A Cadillac by Jazz was going to be campaigned by McKenzie Wester in the 11 under division in 2023. Described as a horse of a lifetime, he will forever be loved and missed by the Wester family. That's one in a lifetime horse right there, said I had. Uh, I had, well, he had it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this next one going to be kind of like a double whammy because Gus Malzahn, I remember the first time I saw him in Columbia, and then he was purchased by Joanne Dow. Buddy Dick was the one that showed him the most. Yes. And, uh, well, we've lost Gus and we've lost Buddy. But uh, Buddy was was one of these that you could say he was one of a kind. Oh yeah, because he uh, he just uh, I love to we'd have lunch together and, and we'd talk about cars, we'd talk about horses, talk about women every now yeah. and then, you know. <laughs> but he loved his cars now. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's Susan on Gus. Yes. Rodney did real well on him too. Well, just like I said before, the walking horse industry in heaven is have a bunch of good horses right now. <laughs> you got now. that right. Him and Buddy reincarnated with each other back yeah. up there. And there's Rodney. Smells on. Now he, he was a good one. Yes. Now he was a real good one. No doubt about it. And then you got Buddy. I tell you what. Buddy is just Buddy. I mean, very special person. Could flat train a horse. Oh yes, he could. Now he he could get the job done. <laughs> Tell you what, he he's missed. Yep. I, I've ate a lot of lunches with Buddy. Thought well, we talk about everything, and you just name it. We he loved that dinner name. table, going there and eating oh, and stuff yeah. like that. Yes. Oh yeah. He uh, this next gentleman is from North Carolina, and I can remember the first time I saw him was in Tazewell, Virginia, and I didn't interview him. I interviewed his son, uh -huh. which is now the trainer, but uh, another one that missed a lot, a whole lot is uh, Chad Balkum. Yeah. They, uh, there's a story about him in uh, Walk Time Charlie. Said that uh, there was a gentleman up there in North Carolina that every afternoon about five o'clock he'd go walk. His name was Charlie. So uh, they got to where they called him Walk Time Charlie. Uh -huh. So that's the reason, that's how the, Walk time, Charlie got his name. Okay. Now, you talking about a trainer. Oh, yes, he's a trainer now. Tad Balkum was a trainer. And every one of his customers, all of them, have nothing but positive things to say about yeah. Chad. He's a good one. <clears throat> Now,
Now we're going to uh, turn back the clock quite a bit because when you're remembering people, you want to remember people in a very good light. Oh, yeah. And, and Russ Thompson once told me that this lady was the most unassuming woman he had ever met. See, she never assumed anything. She was always eager to learn and willing to work and would ask, never assumed anything. That's Susan Gordon. She was a heck of a rider. Oh, yeah. I remember I was out there watching her one day, and uh, Russ was telling her to do something. And, uh, he, was, he was telling her to loosen the reins. And uh, then he hollered out there, and he said, I didn't say throw them down. <laughs> he was a, but I tell you what, she is a beautiful lady and a graceful rider, and one of the most polite she she was so polite to everybody. Yes. I mean, she really was. And when it comes time to decorate that barn. Oh, that's what I was just going to say. She's a good decorator. She was oh, out boy. there decorating. I remember, I'll never forget the big horseshoe she put in front of that barn out there. That's right. With them roses on it. She always had that barn looking oh, spiffy, spiffy, buddy. Yes. I mean, it looked good. She won her chair of the oh, yeah, ribbons too, but but in that she could ride. Specialist. Mm-hmm. When you look back and remember these people, both trainers and amateurs, it, there's. A, if we had a big round table, there could be a lot of stories told. Oh, yeah. us, Arthur and the girls. But just like I said before, you look back at these videos right here. You know, she, she's passed away and stuff like that. Probably the horse is too. Mm -hmm. And I mean, but it still makes you this excited about watching this video now yep. than it did then. I mean, well, it ain't it's nothing the like, memories. It's, that's right, memories and good videos. Memories of what you were doing during this time. And the horses she have, the horses are doing the lick of the, to the day. Oh yeah. The horses are, are good horses. sit here and I watch the video and, and I can remember some of these nights and it, it makes you it really just brings back a lot of memories. Yeah. Just look at that ring full of horses right I know. There. Susan showed when there was really no gimmies out there. Oh, you no. had to earn what you got. Just right. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Oh, 
know you, you and Vic Ray. I mean, she, she did it all. She did it and all. She was a very mm -hmm. special person, very special. All right, well, we got some more tributes to do, but you're going to have to do something. you got to make a living today. Go ahead. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And J.D. Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book, too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Remember the winner's circle. You got the gift shop, you got knives, you English saddles and accessories, English and cutback. Western and Trooper saddles and accessories, complete line attack, bits, spurs, training aids, stable supplies, grooming medication, horse clothing, riding apparel, accessories, and footwear. While you're in town, go down to Winter Circle and tell them what a horse sent you. The Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect horse to bring a family together for fun-filled days and nights of competition. From the youngest and the smallest in the family to the oldest and the biggest, the Tennessee Walking Horse provides an avenue for the entire family to enjoy competing together. If you ride one today, you will own one tomorrow. Jerry, you're going to enjoy this because we got some more tributes, but we also got some interviews with some legends. Oh, yes. And I mean legends in breeding, riding, you name it, it's here. And the first one is one of my dearest friends. He and I used to popcorn together, <laughs> and we'd always have to have our popcorn, yeah. and, but he's just a fantastic guy. Mr. Jeff Givens. We was up in Lebanon. I told him, I said, I'll go get us some bag of popcorn. He said, all right. After I went and got it, I come back. I said, that's the last time I'll go get it. He said, why? I said, that stuff's five dollars a bag. <laughs> We'd been buying it for a dollar a bag. Jeff always took care of the auction. Oh, yeah. And so he, he got me hooked on it to where I'd end up down there early and helping him set it up. But Jeff was a... Jeff, he's a, a good he guy. Very special. I know I thought a lot of him. Yes. He loved Joanne Dow, but... Yes. Tell some funny stories down there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those were the good times. Yes. There's Miss Joanne. Uh, every once in a while, I talk to his son, Christopher. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was something. All right, we're going to uh, go straight to the interview now because Jeff did an interview, and we've got several interviews, so let's go listen to Jeff's interview. I bought him a sun drop and, and, okay. told, and told him that, <laughs> that I would show everybody why it was my fault that, uh, that we goofed his uh, interview. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, he was real gracious. Right. Now, he was. I called him, and he said, well, let me think about it, and he thought about it a little bit, and he said, I guess I can do that. So we got together and got some footage of a world grand championship that he's won, some world championships, and even a little retirement ceremony. Right. But Jeff, I got a question. 
I see you mainly, I see you show padded horses, but you show flat shod more than you do anything else. And I mean, that that's just, uh, how did you come to do that? You know, we do have both padded uh, performance horses and the pleasure horse. But for about the last 10 years, it seemed like we just kept having more and more flat shod horses to train and just got to where I emphasize more, I guess, on the flat shod horse. Now, was your father a trainer also? No, but uh, he had always had mares and uh, shown some. He was a hairstylist in Murfreesboro. And I've always, uh, you know, been around walking horses, grew up with it, and just decided that's what I wanted to do. Well, Jeff, what, in the wintertime, what all goes on at your barn? We, uh, we still uh, work some younger horses in preparation for show season. Some of our older set show horses uh, you know, we'll give them time off, just let them be a horse, turn them out mm -hmm. a lot during the daytime, uh, let them just get exercise that away, you know, pull their shoes off. You know, a lot of barns do that. I, I talked to several people and they said, well, we're just going to knock the shoes off and let them be a horse for a while. How, how long is the off season for you guys? We have about three months, mm -hmm. really, that's our off season. Mm -hmm. There are a few shows in February, uh, you know, usually. Uh, for the last few years, Joe Cotton and myself have uh, made a point to go to Marshall, Texas to show, and that's about the middle of February. Mm -hmm. uh, we really and that's a pretty good there. haul from here, I would yes, think. Yes, it is. We, uh, we stay with our good friends, Wink and Nancy Groover, mm -hmm. and really enjoy going to that show so, and being with them. So the camaraderieship here in this industry is such that even though they know you're coming out there to provide some serious competition for them, they still take you in, right? right? They that's sure do. That's great. That is trigger treat. And he won back to back. Right. One tunica, one Perry. Uh-huh. Uh, he has won uh, 10 blue ribbons in the 05 show season. He belongs to Miss Joanne Dale in Canton, Ohio. Uh, he's sired by their Palomina World Grand Champion trip, My Trigger, and out of a world champion mare that Sue Ann, her daughter, showed. Tell you what. You couldn't beat you Jeff. Couldn't even, no, you couldn't. Hey, hey, Jeff was, uh, he was something guy. special. Real good guy. Do you know another gentleman that we did an interview with him? We did a program with him once that uh, maybe later we'll bring it back and show it again. But uh, he was one of the best breeders around. Yes. That's Mr. Larry Lohman. I'm here at Bridlewood with Mr. Larry Lohman. And uh, Larry, we're going to talk about the Walking Horse Foundation. One, I believe you're the president, CEO of it. President now. Uh -huh. Okay. Tell us a little bit about how the Walking Horse Foundation works. Uh, we set up the Walking Horse Foundation uh, through the Breeders Association, and it's a 501c3 organization to which we can take contributions and, and also take those contributions and put them into specific areas if a person wants to, or if they can donate just to the foundation itself, and the foundation can use those monies into a lot of programs. We have uh, a small brochure that we put out uh, about the foundation. Anybody that's interested can call us and we'll send them one. And it breaks down the different types of uh, donations or different areas you can donate. Like, for instance, the, we have a therapeutic riding program donation. We have a historical and preservation fund. Uh, we have a general uh, adopt a horse program, that kind of thing. So it can be divided out into lots of different categories. Okay. Like the therapeutic, now that would cover horse play, great stride, mm -hmm. the, these areas. Yeah, here. if you wanted to donate, let's say $1,000 to uh, that program, or if you wanted to donate a horse to that program, either way. You can donate it and then they get the full tax credit. Full tax credit. And mm -hmm. They get the, then that division right there gets the gets the money the, gets the money right. But now we also it works like let, let's just say someone gave ten thousand dollars. That goes into the foundation, and I believe you that the foundation itself makes their money on interest that that it draws. That it draws. Yeah. That it draws. The money is put in. It would be that money would be like the ten thousand would would be earmarked. Let's say for therapeutic riding. And we would uh, get a very small portion of that. I mean, uh, uh, it, it's hard to really explain to you, break it all down in just a moment or two of, of how we would get some. But we would get just a small percentage, like a handling fee. Right. And, well, but I the knew, bulk of the money would go to the Peter crying. The way I was, uh, you know, the way I saw it before was that if I said I wanted that spread over a year, 
yeah. and they would receive that money over a year and then whatever funds that it generated mm -hmm. would go to the interest and that helps other areas though. Helps other areas, you're exactly right. Okay. Now I know that I've talked to you several times about the uh, water horse program mm -hmm. and how we could work hand in hand with the Walking Horse Foundation. Mm -hmm. So can you explain a little bit about how that would work? Well, if somebody again wanted to make that $10,000 donation and wanted to go toward publicity or toward um, the media of, of promoting the Tennessee Walking Horse, let's say uh, you, Jerry Harris, wanted to donate that $10,000, we could set up a, what we would call a Jerry Harris Fund. And that Jerry Harris Fund would, in turn, uh, that money would, you would say, I want that money to go to what a horse then the, the, uh, the foundation would make sure that every dollar went to promotion through what a horse. Okay, mm -hmm. that would be good. That helps everybody. Helps a, lot, helps a lot of people, especially with people that want to donate and take tax credits. Uh, it, it helps quite a bit. Well, that, now, and then also some of these funds are going to go to one of my favorite spots in Lynchburg. <laughs> tell, tell us a little bit <laughs> about museum, that. Yeah. The museum. Well, that's, that's, the, that's in our historical preservation uh, fund. And uh, what we want to do is in, in time we would like to e e like have libraries uh, with books and things that people could come, magazines, and, and view the history of the horse. And, and also possibly have another museum in time uh, that would be a larger, more in-depth museum than, than what that one is down there. I don't know. I really like going through there because I, I know y'all make changes yeah, every now and then. all the time. Yeah. And there's a, I, I've carried my, my daughter through there a couple of times with me and she, re, she really loves it. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of, if you've never been down to Lynchburg and seen the Walking Horse Museum, it would really pay you to take the time to ride down there. It's a beautiful drive. It's a beautiful little town, it's like the Mayberry of yeah, Tennessee. Exactly. But uh, some of the things you see there is a lot more there than Jack Daniels and in, in mm -hmm. this. The the Walking Horse Museum is definitely a spot that everybody needs to go by and see. And exactly. I know that uh, I know you've taken great pride in in mm -hmm. putting it up. And uh, I believe we've even got one of the things that I really noticed in there was the night Bill Bobo won the celebration. He took another tie out, mm -hmm. put that tie on, made his trip around the ring, his victory lap. That tie is down there in the museum, and that was C.A. Bobo's tie that he wore when he won. When he won so And much, I, I yeah, thought that dead, was yeah. a, a very touching spot. Very touching. Very now, touching. We, we've talked about the Walking Horse Museum. We've talked about the foundation. Yeah, we've talked about Water Horse. Let's talk about your breeding facilities. Mm, okay. Now, I know that you got Jen Darmed and Dangerous, and we just have. name some of the other. Stadium we have Jen's Armed and Dangerous, which is the leading sire uh, of, the, of the, our industry right now. We have uh, Generator Silver Dollar, which is one of the top five producing stallions. We have uh, 16 stallions in all, uh, and we've got a stallion to pretty much cover any kind type of mare you want to breed, whether it be plantation, whether it be spotted, or if you're breeding for performance, we've got a stallion to cover that. And tomorrow night, or tonight, tonight, tonight. we're going to have Black night shade. No, uh, be a Friday night. Friday night. Friday okay. Night. Tomorrow sorry. night. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow night it's going to be on there to where they do the autograph section and all this. Now Jimmy McConnell will be doing the autographs, mm -hmm. not nightshade, right? Right. <laughs> but I don't know. Y'all may have been teaching maybe. him to write, but he's 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 got the stamping down, but not the writing. <laughs> not the writing. He can stamp it, but he can't write it. Well, I know just people coming down there talking to Jimmy is going to be a lot of fun. Will you be there? Yeah, yeah. They set that up in front of the Blue Ribbon Circle, and they set up a, a temporary stall, and we bring nightshade over there, and uh, Jimmy will have a table, and we've got color pictures printed uh, with nightshade and Jimmy, and that he's going to autograph, and they're special made just for that session. Mm -hmm. Uh, it'll do it from I think three to six on Thursday. It'd be great. Yeah, it'd be great. It, it's uh, we, well, I've been fortunate enough to have uh, two other World Grand Champions here, and we've had, went through those autograph sessions. So it's been it's a lot of a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize everything that man did for the Walking Horse. Industry. Oh yeah, man, you're did. right. But before anybody starts going to Lynchburg. The museum's in war trace, trace now. now. Yeah. <laughs> That's how long ago that's been. <laughs> All right, this next one, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, th this guy is one that he uh, would order potatoes that had to be half cooked. <laughs> they wasn't half cooked, he wouldn't eat it. <laughs> but now, as far as a, a great guy, you couldn't beat Benny Johnson with a stick, I yeah. swear. 
Let's go right now, I am with Mr. Benny Johnson. Benny, y'all going to have one heck of a show this week. Well, we're anticipating it. Hope we do. We usually have a good show. It's, uh, it's our 38th annual Walking Horse Trainers Association show, and uh, we're looking for great things. Uh, the future looks good for the walking horse industry, and I hope we kick it off. I know there's been some earlier shows, and some of the trainers getting their feet wet, but uh, I hope they bring the good horses and step up, and let's have a great show. I believe they will, and uh, I know when we had D on the show, we was talking about the fact that for the last three years, the horse that won this went on. That's right. That's what we advertised. The horse that's won the se trainer show in March has won the celebration in September. And that's the last three years, and that's, that's saying a lot. And all of them were good horses, and we were privileged to have them show them there, and, uh, and things worked out good for them. But it got them started off to a good start, too. They beat some good horses in the class, and it got them started off good. Well, it set that level up. And I know I've talked to a lot of people. You know, there's going to be a whole lot of good horses there this, this week. But right now, the main thing is the trainer's new building. And it, I'm going to tell you what, this is a beautiful facility. Well, this is long overdue for Trainer Association. We have always rented. Well, we owned one building out on 41A. And uh, the property became a lot more valuable. And we had opportunity to sell and do good with it. So we sold it. And all of that, of course, went toward this building. And it's uh, we've... Uh, We've been fortunate with a lot of the auxiliary help and a lot of outside help uh, in the industry to help us uh, to afford to buy this property. And uh, it's really great for the Trainer Association to have their own home. Well, I know I'm tickled for you, but Benny, I'm going to tell you, now next time you go to Arizona, we need to get you some sunblock. Well, the, uh, there's a lady had a vendor out there, a vendor spot. And on Sunday, no, Saturday, she gave me some. She said, you are burned up, but it was a little late. Then Sunday, <laughs> it rained all day, and it was cold, so. But I'm peeling right now, but anyhow, it uh, That won't stop you from having a good horse show. No, we're going to have a good horse show. Rain, sun, sleet, or hell, we're going to have a great horse show. That's all that matters. Man, he would tell it like oh, it is. Yeah, he, will. <laughs> he was a good one. So. Yeah, he will do that. I, and I was talking to some people about feeding horses, and there was everybody would tell you that this gentleman right here, he had it down to a science on what he was going to do. Yeah. And I'm talking about none other than my good buddy, that Joe Martin. This is Mr. Joe Martin of Shelbyville, Tennessee. Long time trainer and one of the best when it comes to knowing the proper feed and feeding procedures for the Tennessee walking horse. Joe, how long have you been training horses? We've been here at this location since 1966. Now you worked the other place. I know you worked for Frey SQ for a while in Kentucky. And I tried several years before we bought this farm. All right. Now, Let's get into the feeding part. I know that you're very particular about the feed that you feed your horses. And could you just go through a little bit of the, the schedule and what you look for in feed? We buy our feed from Tim Edwards in Lebanon, and he mixes it for us. And we feed primarily oats and corn with some vitamins added to it. All right. And how, like what type of feeding schedule do you put them on? We feed twice a day. About 7 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. All right. Now, is this year-round, or is there certain times that you change that up some? Or that, Pretty well year-round. We try to feed a horse about 10 pounds. The horses we're working, about 10 pounds of grain a day, and the horses that are on rest, about 7 pounds a day. Okay, so you, you, you kind of put them back. Explain to the people why you don't feed them as much if they're not working. Well, a horse not doing anything is just like a person sitting around. They just don't require as many calories and as much food to maintain their body weight and everything. And it's better on a horse not to overfeed him when he's standing stop. All right. Is there any uh, things that could happen to a horse as far as, as uh, if they over if they eat too many too much grain? Personally I think if you're feeding too much grain you're running a lot higher risk of colicking a horse. And you also found the one which is not often but it's possible. Well, what about the uh, uh, I know that you also feed hay, so how do you do your hay? We try to feed a horse around 10 to 12 pounds of hay a day. Okay, 10 to 12 pounds. We feed hay twice a day, morning, when we grain, we hay most times a day. Okay, plenty of water. 
But a lot oh, we've of them, a lot of salt. A lot of salt? We feed loose salt three days a week. Okay, that makes them drink more water and it helps uh, keep them. Any plus. animal's got to have salt. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, now, and you said that you use Edwards feed out of Lebanon, Tennessee. Yeah. Is there a particular reason you use them? I like Tim, and, and he'll mix your feed any way you want to. And he works through Farmer's Feed Mill in Lexington, Kentucky, which has two or three of the best nutritionists in the world up there. Any problems you have, he'll call them. Like last year, they fed 17 of the horses that were running in the derby were on farmers' feed mill feed up there. So that that says a lot right there. Uh, they're great people to work with. And I know you're getting ready for getting some more coats ready for the summer. So, and that's one other thing I did want to ask you: Did you, when you start a coat, do you start the coat out eating as much as the other horses, or do you have a certain way of starting a, a younger coat? We might not the first few days feed them quite as much feed, but when we start working, we feed them all about the same. All right. Oh, yeah. Good now, I'm going to tell you what, he was, him and, and Dick Peoples. Dick oh, yeah. Peoples is, is real particular Peoples about these, mm -hmm. and, and so was he, so was <clears throat> Joe. But now we're going to go to the to the legend. Because any, any time you talk about the legend, everybody knows it. Oh, yeah. You know who I'm talking about. I know about. exactly who you're talking All about. All right. Let's go see the legend, Billy Gray. Tell us how it felt to come back into the celebration. Had a great horse to ride, and it was a great feeling, and a great feeling especially to how the crowd accepted me. Well, I know when you come in, there was, sure was a loud ovation, and, and everybody was cheering you right. Every time you'd make a move to get between horses or whatever, everybody seemed to be really behind you. Well, that was a great feeling. You know, that's something that uh, you, even though you're just showing a horse, but at the same time, your job is to en entertain those people that's there that's bought and paid tickets to come and see that horse show. Well, that's true. You're, you're one of the few trainers I've ever heard say that, but I'm sure all of them feel basically the same way. Billy, how many grand championships if you won it, can you count them sure I, you know right off the top of my head i couldn't give you a true answer uh that was the seventh time that i had won the two-year-old championship uh you know I, of course i rode three world's grand champions um, and we've won i've won several of the three-year-olds and the four-year-olds but uh like i said that was my seventh two-year-old world champion what was your first world grand champion? The lights bumming around in 1973. That's what I was thinking. I was there and I watched you and I, I was thinking that was your first one. But I know that you've got a lot more under your belt since then. Right, okay. right. What are your plans from here on out the rest of the year? You know, we're gonna be making some fall shows this year. Tim and I both will be riding and showing, but we're gonna be making some fall shows this year. Yeah. Well, how do you, after we all sit back and look at it, what would you say about the celebration this year? Sure, i tell you what I thought about the celebration. You know, before it started, everybody was on pins and needles, and sure, it was a hard 10 days for the horse trainers of getting the horses in and out. I think the boys done a great job. They had the horses in great shape as far as I'm concerned. And, but at the same time, I think after it was all said and done, and you sit there and analyze whatever, what went on back there in inspection and what came through the gates, we had a good celebration. I think we did too. My hat goes off to all of them, and my hat goes off to all the trainers, because I know they worked hard, and uh, what more can I say? They just turned out or ended up a great celebration. You know what I was proud of, Jerry, that our owners, I think, left the celebration with a good feeling about the horse industry. I'm sure there were some that didn't, but I think overall there was a good feeling about the walking horse industry. Once the celebration was over, to compare it to what it was before it started. Well, I'm going to ask you one more question, and this is because I've wondered ever since, because when you come in the gate, you got a standing ovation. What 
was going through your mind at that time? You know, at that time, uh, here, I guess my, what was going through my mind is I hoped my horse was good enough to be the two-year-old world champion. That's a good way to feel. I remember he told me one time, we was talking about the state class, and he said, I believe I got one more in me. <laughs> and he did. Yep, I can understand that. He was a good uh, guy, real good well, person. I'm going to do it this time, I think. We're going to take a short pause for our sponsors, and we'll be right back. How'd I do? We done good. Good. Give me. <laughs> What's wrong with the Humane Society of the United States? Despite its name, the Humane Society of the U.S. is not affiliated with your local pet shelter. Charity Watch gives HSUS a D grade, finding around half of each donation is spent on overhead. Where does the money go? To pay some sketchy people. The previous CEO left under a cloud of sexual harassment. The current CEO, who makes over $400,000 a year, came from PETA, the same organization that kills thousands of cats and dogs a year. Then there's John Goodwin. He's a lobbyist who used to be a spokesperson for the Animal Liberation Front, a group that supports arson and terrorism, according to the FBI. The Humane Society of the United States might sound nice, but there's a lot you don't know. Visit humanewatch.org to learn more. Six-time world champion in the amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dowell at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> You know, Jerry, in, in, in years past, we've, we've had a lot of great, I mean, truly great people in oh, this yes, industry. Oh, yes, we have. We have and a lot of people. Had good, good trainers and, and good, good owners. Yes. Some of them, you know, like we, we've had some that, that never showed horses mm -hmm. theirself, but they always watched their horses. And we've had husbands that only had wives in the ring. Yes. Uh, and then we've had some that husband and wife, both children and all. They, but when you look back through the years of people that, to me, really helped the industry a lot by sponsoring shows, by being competitive themselves. And, and we've had some, some of them have been women. Oh, yeah. That just stood out. And uh, this next interview is one that, that this lady right here, I, th I thought the world of her because she is always very plain spoken and she'd just tell you the way she felt. And, and I really appreciated that in her. And that's Miss George Ann Pratt. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jerry Harris, and we're here at the Alabama Jubilee, and I'm with George Ann Pratt. And George Ann, they're having a heck of a show down here. It's a great show. It's always been a good show, but this year they've got a lot of great horses, and they've got good judges, and we've had a wonderful show so far. Well, now, I know you like the judges. You've done one twice. Yes, I have, and that's a first for me to win twice. No, it's not. Won first in Jackson, Mississippi a couple years ago on different horses. Now, tell us about which class was first. Tonight, uh, yeah. Last night, I rode a horse named Abel. He is a stallion. He is three, and he's good. He's very good. And tonight, good. Uh, thank you. Tonight, I showed a mare. She's five. I've owned her since she was two. And she and I are a good team, and she is as affectionate as she is good. You know, we, well, we picked you out both times to win, and, and I, I can't do that very often. I'm going to tell you, every now and then I hit the jackpot. But now, how many years have you been showing? I came to Tennessee about eight or nine years ago. And I grew up riding horses, but I grew up riding quarter horses, and I cut cattle with my grandfather when I was 10 years old. 
And then I was in a bad car accident when I was 18 and did not ride until I was almost 48 years old. So there was a big time span in there. So when I bought my first horse, I took him to Missouri and decided that the action was here. So I moved the horses to Tennessee and I ended up staying here more than I go back to Kansas City. You like it, Tennessee. We got a great little town now, don't we? We've got a great town. I like the people. I like the food. I love the horses. I like the atmosphere. Well, now who trains your horses? Alan Calloway is our trainer, and he has done an excellent job for us. Alan finds the horses for me. I don't chop. I ask Alan to, and he can find something that fits me. Now Alan's good at that. I know Alan. He's a nice Alan, man. He's a, he's a great person. Yes, we've, had, we've had him on Water Horse a couple of times. Oh, good. And of course, uh, John Allen and PGA now. That, oh, that's a team right they, there. Aren't they good? Oh, yeah, yeah. John Allen has great hands. He learned them from his dad. He's got great hands. Well, now they've been training horses for a long time. I, I visit with John Allen or Allen every now and then, and, and that, they got a great barn. Yes. Uh, when he won the World Grand Championship, he was awesome. Yeah. They've got a great barn, and the people are pull for each other. They kind of sit together when we get somebody new in the barn. It's like a new person in the family. And we are very family oriented. And that's a family oriented barn, father and sons. And so we're, we all have well, a Now, good what time. about your husband? Does he show? No, my husband is retired. He was with Butler Manufacturing Company. And he's been retired about a year and a half, but he sits on some boards. And so he travels quite a bit. And he doesn't ride. He just watches you. He just watches you. That begin to be a lot for the men sitting on the sideline letting the wives. He's I don't my like greatest them. fan. Oh, that's, that's what it's supposed to be. Well. Now, when are you going to show next? I don't know. I don't know until I get a phone call and say, well, you're going to go tonight. And I said, okay, and I'm ready. Now, we've got some good ones coming up. We've got Tunica coming up. Yes. And then we've got Perry. Now, I and think that we're pretty much to... wipes the, the big shows, the real big ones out. And of course, there's one in Winchester, but at the same time, the one's in Perry. I mean, in uh, Tunica. But Is it? there's still some good ones. And then everybody kind of lays back and waits for the trainer show. That's right. And I think we're probably going to go to Perry. At least we're talking about it at this point. And then I come down during the winter and I ride and practice and hope that I don't fall off and learn get something ready for the summer. and get ready for the summer. Learn something every day. If you don't learn to do something different every day, you're in a little rut. Well, you, you don't want to get in no rut. No. George Ann, I appreciate you being with us. Well, and I'm going to look for you in Paris. I hope you have good as luck down there. Well, you thank you, here. sir. So do I. And I appreciate you and your time. Well, thank you. Thank you. She was special. Yes, mm -hmm. she was. She was. She was always willing to help. Always willing to. I mean, she just a great person. Yes, super great person. I used to, before they got cable out there, I would take her a DVD by. Uh -huh. She loved to watch shows. <laughs> All right. All right. Now is a lady that I worked with this lady quite a bit on having horse shows, uh, and bringing different groups in. Yes, she was. Uh, she, after we kicked off the Equine Education Day, this lady jumped in with both hands, and I mean, she helped a tremendous amount, and we raised quite a bit of funds. Uh, matter of fact, we, we got uh, Walmart to put money into equine education, which was good, and this lady was real big about equine education, Miss Kathy Sice. I'm here with Kathy Sice at Rising Star Ranch, and Kathy, we're about to have a group come in here that's going to be taking a tour, and we're going to introduce them to the walking horse. Can you share with the people a little bit about that? Um, last fall, I was approached by one of our um, scholarship uh, uh, winners about FAST doing um, a promotion for um, the Block and Bridal Club of MTSU. They are hosting the National Block and Bridal Convention this week. There's 500 kids coming to MTSU. Um, we agreed and we asked them as part of our grant that we um, be able to promote and introduce our show horses to the uh, kids going on the barn and uh, stallion uh, uh, tour. So we did. We've put together a day today. They're going to um, start out in the breeding barn. They're going to collect Texas Joe Black, and Tracy's going to give them a tour of the um, 
stain collection, the lab, and all what goes on. Then we're going to come over here, and we're going to choose by lottery. They'll get to ride um, out on parole, Texas Joe Black, Red Sunday's Best, and Victoria's Got a Secret. Um, there's a hundred kids, so we can't let them all ride, but we're going to choose by lottery. They'll put their name in a hat, and we'll draw it out, and whatever name That's comes right. up, they get, they get well, to now, ride. I'll tell you, Debbie's got enough horses down there that we could probably <laughs> let them all ride one. Well, I don't know. Some of them may not have been ridden very much, but, but we could They're uh, going to leave here. We're on a strict time schedule. They're going to leave here, and they're going to go and tour the celebration and have lunch there, and then they continue on with the tour. I think they end up at the distillery, but we won't talk about that with all these college no, kids. We're, we're, we're out here at Rising Star. We're going to talk about that. All right. And Kathy worked hard oh, yes, for this she industry. She mm -hmm. was big on helping put on horse shows. She jumped in with both feet oh, yes, anytime. All you had to do was say, Kathy, can you help? <laughs> but she didn't want to be the manager because she wants to show. So, yeah. I don't blame her. All right. Th this next gentleman, uh, he, he was a buddy of yours. Yes. Big time. Yeah, I mean, he, he had to be. You sold him the same horse twice. <laughs> he had to be a good yeah, friend. Was, uh, a real good guy. A real good guy. <laughs> Who are we talking about? Mr. Don Collins. Miss <laughs> that's it, Mr. Don Collins. It's our special guest today is Don and Lucky Collins. I used to ride. Okay. I used to ride, but Lucky took all the good horses, so I just quit. <laughs> Donnie mm -hmm. was the last person to ride Mudslide Slim that we owned. And you the owned last person the mm -hmm. last person to canter Mudslide Slim. Oh boy. On the reverse, and he never cantered. And Donnie did that at celebration and then we retired him. I showed uh, when we first got into it a little bit, and then uh, as the horses got better and, and Lucky was doing so well, I just backed off. You know, I really enjoy watching her show more than I did. I He's love to watch him. Great. Yeah. He's a great ground man and the best buyer in the whole business. The best buyer. The best. I he like can that pick too. a horse out like no one can. Well, how did you go about getting into the business? Lucky uh, bought a dog from this lady who lived in our subdivision. And one afternoon, this lady was out doing nothing, and she stopped at a barn. And they ended up buying two horses. And she come home and told Lucky, she said, would you like to see my new horses? And Lucky said, oh, yes, I would. This was with David Bledsoe down in Georgia. And the next thing I knew, we were at family night, and Don had bought his first horse for Lucky. And the trainer said, Oh, it's a lovely horse, but she can't ride this one. We'll let her ride another one. <laughs> and uh, we the start, best horse in the barn. We started, we started <laughs> from there. <laughs> that, that's, 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 that's Don. We bought the best horse in the, in the barn. barn. Yeah. He's something well, else well, now. Well, I guess that's it for this week. Have you yes, got anything sir. else? No, I don't have too much else. You don't have anything else? I didn't enjoy these videos and memories and stuff like that of people and horses and all that stuff. It's fantastic. Well, we got a lot going on tomorrow. So I guess from now, we'll tell everybody bye, and then we will see you next week with another show, which is going to be educational. Yes. We're going to Dr. Bennett's. That's very educational. Every time you go to Dr. Bennett's, he always teaches you something and learns something all the time. That's it. <music> Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. I got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, What a horse! I know they're talking about me, of course, and I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.
Thank you.